you. New satellite images and visual sightings of possible debris have offered the strongest evidence yet in the search for missing flight MH370. It comes as investigators focus on the last phone call received by the Malaysian pilot. Simon Boda with the latest. Eight planes crisscrossing the sky an armada of ships skimming across a massive and unforgiving ocean. All eyes straining for a speck of a clue, the intensity heightened by a new grainy satellite image of what may be wreckage of the MH370. The more aircraft we have, the more ships we have, the more confident we are of recovering whatever material is down there. The news broke in the middle of a press conference when the Malaysian Transport Minister was handed a scrap of paper. But the news that I just received is that uh, the Chinese ambassador uh, received satellite image of floating objects in the southern corridor and they will be sending ships to verify. The photo was taken on Tuesday and shows an object which is 22 and a half metres long and 13 metres wide. Listen up, we are here waiting for you 14 days. For the families of the 154 Chinese passengers on board the MH370, desperation turned to anger during a briefing by Malaysian authorities, furious when they refused to take questions. Give back my relatives, tell the truth. They are lying. In China, the US First Lady Michelle Obama offering victims comfort. Please know that we are keeping all of the families and loved ones of those on this flight in our thoughts and in our prayers at this very difficult time. But even with a squadron of search aircraft covering a massive 59,000 square kilometres today, still no confirmed sightings. Last night though, a civilian ultra long range jet did bring back some news. They saw something. A number of small objects uh, fairly close together within the Australian search zone, including, as I understand it, a wooden pallet. The use of wooden pallets is quite common in the industry. Um, they can be packed, they're usually packed into um, a, uh, another container which is, which is loaded in the, the, the belly of the aircraft. A Kiwi P3 Orion aircraft was diverted to the location, but all they saw were clumps of seaweed. It's truly an international effort. Canadian spotters on board an RAAF Orion. We conducted uh, approximately two hours of searching and uh, we didn't, uh, weren't able to locate anything uh, of significance. Uh, however, there are other aircraft uh, that are continuing the search at this time that uh, hopefully we'll have uh, some better luck. Adding to this seemingly impossible task, a tropical cyclone threatening to bring strong winds and rough seas to an already perilous ocean. Let's go to Laura Turner in Kuala Lumpur. And Laura, what's the latest you're hearing there? Good evening, Brett. Well, just as we speak, the search for MH370 is getting underway just off the coast of Perth. There was really bad weather out there this morning. It has cleared up now, so all that aircraft and that Navy vessel are out there as we speak. But uh, AMSA has also just updated their information, saying along with that wooden crate that was seen last night, they've also found a number of coloured strapping belts. They've seen them at least, and they're often used with these wooden crates in aircraft, so that could be a significant development there. As for what's going on in Malaysia at the moment, while the investigation is fair and square on the pilot, there's now news that he answered the phone on his mobile phone in the cockpit, spoke to a mystery woman for about two minutes before takeoff, and apparently that woman was calling from a SIM card that was obtained using a false ID and purchased only days before that aircraft took off. There is no update for the media here in Malaysia this afternoon, so for the world, all eyes are on a Australia, Brett. All right, Lorna Turner in Kuala Lumpur, thank you.